So you're thinking about moving to Boca Raton, you just aren't quite sure which neighborhood you wanna to move to. All you know is that you prefer living out east, near the beach, close to downtown, and you wanna explore the area a bit more. You may be browsing online and realize many homes in Boca Raton are in gated communities with homeowners associations or golf and country clubs that require a bunch of fees. Am I right? Well, I'm glad you're here because in this video, we're gonna review the top six open neighborhoods in East Boca Raton without any HOA and some with very little HOAs that you're not gonna really feel. This way, it'll be easier for you to get an idea of where you can possibly live in the East Boca area. This is the first video in our Boca neighborhood series, so just know that we'll be covering a ton of other communities in future videos, waterfront communities, more affordable locations, and ultra luxury. But the ones that I selected for this video are the more popular open neighborhoods that people ask about when they're looking to buy out East. Let's get to it. This is your first time on the channel and you wanna know what it's like to live in South Florida in cities like Boca Raton, then consider subscribing below and tap that bell for notifications so you can be the first to know when I post new content about living here. Go ahead and hit that like button too if you find this video helpful, it actually helps our channel. My name is Jonathan, my team and I, we get calls, texts, emails, and messages on social media from people just like you every single day that are looking to make the move to or around South Florida. We love being able to help, so whether you're looking to make a move next week, next month, or even next year, give us a call or send us a text, all in the description below. Happy to help you make a smooth move to or around South Florida. So as I mentioned, if you're in the situation where you really need to make a move to the Boca Raton area soon, or you're just eyeing the area for a future move, again, I'm gonna go over the top six East Boca Raton neighborhoods East Boca meaning everything that's east of I-95 that are open communities that are no gated, some with no HOA association or monthly fees, some with voluntary HOAs or small fees with less restrictions and more freedom. What does that all mean? That means that you can park your boat, RV, you can paint your house any color, fix your landscaping how you see fit and not have anyone telling you what you can and can't do. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to pinpoint if these communities match what you're looking for so you can make an informed decision before moving here. All right, here we go. First on our list is one of the most sought after and charming neighborhoods in all of South Florida, but especially Boca. Old Floresta. The charming historic neighborhood of Old Floresta is located just west of downtown Boca Raton between Palmetto Park Road and Glaze Road, east of I-95. It was established in the 1920s by the famous architectural visionary Addison Meisner, who was essentially the father of what we call the Palm Beach style. Although Meisner was only able to create 29 of the homes in Old Floresta before his project went bankrupt due to a storm in 1926, his influence paved the way for the Mediterranean and Spanish revival home style that you see in Boca and all throughout Palm Beach. Old Floresta was designated as Boca Raton's first historic district in 1990, and you can even find its historic mile marker standing proud. There's definitely a special energy around this community, and there's a reason why so many Boca Ratonians call this their dream community. People often compare Old Floresta to the historic neighborhoods found in Coral Gables down south in Miami, and you'll notice the particular Mediterranean style found here have simple exterior of rough finished stucco walls, red barrel tile roofs, and multiple windows and doors with wrought iron balconies, columns, and French doors. Today, you'll find a variety of home styles here, including your typical ranch style, but overall, Old Floresta is very much considered a luxury community due to the area's price appreciation over the last several years, and prices can go well into the millions. Now, with that being said, you'll find large residences here ranging from 3,000 square feet to over 8,000 square feet with plenty of high-end features such as custom swimming pools, gourmet chef's kitchens with premium appliances like Wolf or Sub-Zero, movie theater rooms, libraries, home gyms, wine rooms, I mean, you name it. People we show properties to in this area also notice the narrow tree-lined streets and how well maintained the landscaping is, which adds to the area's charm. You'll see low-hanging canopy trees, cypresses, oak trees, among, of course, the various palm trees that you're gonna find throughout South Florida. People that buy in this community often say that they want a home with character 
and you'll find a lot here in Old Floresta. The setting adds to the neighborhood's walkability, which makes it easy to take a stroll here with your kids, your dogs, or even just show your friends and family the history and notable homes in the area walking on foot. Homes to check out in Old Floresta to take you back in time are 888 Oleander Street, which was owned by Henry Meisner, 875 Alamander Street, which was the home of Herman von Holst, called the Lavender House, 801 Hibiscus Street, owned by film producer and mayor of Boca Raton at the time, Fred Aiken. Other famous local residents of Old Floresta were Nathaniel Weil, who authored the book Red Star Over Cuba, Thomas Fleming, founder of Florida Atlantic University, and Don Estridge, who led development of the original IBM personal computer, known by many as the father of the IBM PC. Another great thing about Old Floresta is that you're extremely close to downtown Boca and Meisner Park. You're only about a mile and a half from all the action. A quick five minute drive or a short bike ride and you're in downtown Boca with popular areas for shopping like Royal Palm Place Plaza and restaurants like Louis Bossi, you have lemongrass, you have chops, lobster bar, and so many other excellent options. If you're looking for the elegance and charm of bygone eras and have the budget, I highly recommend looking in Old Floresta. There's really no other community in Boca Raton like this one. It's truly one of a kind, and as I stated before, people that live here would even go as far as calling it a dream community. That takes you back in time in a modern world. All right, so let's stay on the historic route. Another popular community with an interesting past is next up on our list. Number two, Camino Gardens. Camino Gardens is located on West Camino Real and Camino Gardens Boulevard, and it's got quite the history. Before the community existed, the land belonged to a nationally famous wildlife attraction in the 1950s called Africa USA but we'll get into that later. Let's talk about the state of the current community and what makes it a great place to live. So the first thing you'll notice about Camino Gardens, what stands out about this community is that all of the homes are one level single story home and feature either a white S barrel or a white flat tile roof. In fact, all 430 homes here have a white roof. So you'll clearly understand where the neighborhood begins and ends. However, although the roof color is uniform, you'll find all kinds of exteriors and different colors, even brick, which adds more character and variety. Homes here vary in price depending on interior renovation, whether or not the home has a pool, especially upgraded luxurious outdoor spaces and of course location. The going rate for most of these homes are over a million dollars for a three bedroom and there are some homes in here that are on the intracoastal with docks and ocean access and of course, an even higher price tag is expected. Remember, this is East Boca and there are homes in other neighborhoods 10 times the price of here in communal gardens. But that's for another video. So this community does have a small HOA fee, which equates to a little over $500 per year. It's a little drop in the pan and nothing compared to gated communities in Boca. Also, I wanna note that this open neighborhood is definitely more strict with rules surrounding your home's appearance. Remember, all the roofs are white, but people still love living here. Another thing residents love are the larger lot sizes in comparison to other neighborhoods. And home sizes can vary anywhere from 1,600 square feet to 3,000 square feet. As you can see from the streets, the residents take pride in their community and the properties are well-maintained with clean landscaping. This is definitely a well-established, active, family-friendly, pet-friendly community. Just driving through the neighborhood, we saw numerous children playing outside, neighbors chatting, and residents jogging. It's an excellent place to live, also zoned for the A-rated Addison Meisner School, Boca Raton Community Middle, and Boca Raton Community High School. Just like the other neighborhoods mentioned earlier, you are minutes away from Meisner, multiple community parks, stores like Trader Joe's, the Fresh Market, you're literally near everything East Boca has to offer. I'm gonna say this often throughout the video. Okay, so back to the Africa USA story. I hope you're in the mood for a history lesson today. So in 1950, a guy by the name of John Peterson purchased 350 acres of land from the town of Boca for only $25 per acre at auction. Can you believe that? 177 acres of the land where Camino Garden now sits was where he built Africa USA, which was one of the first cageless African safaris at that time. There was a huge sign and there were billboards that stretch all along A1A advertising the attraction. And during that time, there was no turnpike or I-95. So A1A was the only way for tourists to get to Miami and naturally they were gonna pass these billboards. Peterson shipped over a hundred animals to the property by ship to the site where they roamed through the creation of this lush African 
jungle of over 55,000 plants. You had winding rivers, you had lakes, a man-made waterfall and geyser. Yes, there were even once camels, you had giraffes, you had cheetahs, elephants, you had ostriches roaming this island. That's pretty crazy. When the park opened in 1953, admission was free and visitors were only charged 95 cents for a tram ride through the park referred to as the jungle train. Now, as time went on, the park grew in popularity and over 300,000 people visited the attraction every year, including Walt Disney himself a long before the idea of Animal Kingdom was ever developed. It's said that he was a frequent visitor of Africa, USA, along with other celebrities and Walt considered buying the park. You know, Betty Page even did an adult rated photo shoot in the park and Africa, USA beat out Disneyland to be on the cover of Life magazine in August of 1960. You can find all of this interesting information and a bunch of photos and stories on the Africa, USA website that's owned by the Peterson family and that serves as a tribute to the park. Really interesting stuff, especially if you're a history lover like me. To make a long story short, the park eventually closed in 1961 after eight years of success due to legal battles which you can read about, but there are still remainders of the park in the community today. For example, when you enter Camino Gardens, you notice a, a charming red footbridge on your left hand side. Now this bridge is original to the park and it led visitors to what was once called Monkey Island. The original lagoon is still there at the base of the Watutsi geyser, along with a plaque that was dedicated to the community in 2003 for the 50th anniversary of Africa, USA. It's also said that Peterson chose to bury some of the animals on site when they passed. So residents have found animal skeletons like giraffes many years later when excavating to install pools and renovating their outdoor space which is wild, but kind of cool from an archeological perspective. Anyway, Camino Gardens is a strong option when deciding where to live here in East Boca, and it's definitely deserving to be a top contender on this list. All right, on to the next one. Number three, Royal Oak Hills. Located south of Palmetto Park Road and north of Camino Real is Royal Oak Hills, which is right across from Old Floresta. The neighborhood consists of about 400 homes and was developed in the 1960s. The homes here are the typical Old Florida vibe, single family homes ranging from about 1,350 square feet to about 3,000 square feet, give or take. As you can see, this is another well-maintained, beautiful East Boca Raton neighborhood, beautifully manicured tropical landscaping, trees everywhere, peaceful and welcoming appeal. The homes here are also not cookie cutter and they range in terms of renovation. Of course, you'll have homes here that look original or need TLC, but many properties have been extensively renovated with luxury upgrades like modern kitchens with quartz or granite islands, open floor plans, hardware floors, extensively renovated pools and outdoor kitchens, high-end fixtures and finishes, brand new roofs and impact windows, all the bells and whistles. For top tier homes, again, you're looking at around a million, but I have seen some homes listed for 600,000 and 800,000 here, which are priced well for this location in East Boca. So it really all depends on what the home has to offer, the upgrades, lot location, and size. There are homes on the El Rio Canal with private docks and boat lifts. Now remember, those will absolutely sell for more. The neighborhood also has what we call a voluntary HOA and does not charge fees to dock your boat. Boaters will absolutely love this neighborhood and the fact that the lowest bridge before ocean access is 12 feet. Other than its obvious beauty, residents here love the sense of community that Royal Oak Hills embody. The neighbors regularly hold community activities and events, decorate for the holidays like Halloween and Christmas, and throw an annual block party loved by residents. If you're looking for a friendly environment where the neighbors wave hello, this could be the one. Again, the same top rated schools that we mentioned earlier, Addison Meisner, Boca Community Middle School, Boca Community High School, Royal Oak Hills, just like Old Floresta, is close to area parks and downtown restaurants, spas, shopping, and so on. One of my favorites on this list is up next, and it's right behind Meisner Park. Number four, Boca Villas and the Golden Triangle. Boca Villas and a few other surrounding neighborhoods like Wissom and Kings Court make up what locals know as the Golden Triangle, which is basically Palmetto Park, Federal Highway, and Fifth Avenue. And you'll see why the name Golden Triangle fits the area perfectly. So for today, we're gonna talk about the inland areas of the triangle, and then I'll make a separate video talking about the luxury waterfront areas. All of the homes here are within a geographical triangle and no HOA. The area has seen a huge shift over the past decade since developers have taken a liking to the location and opportunity that it offers. Homes here that were mostly built in the 1950s and the 1960s are being demolished and and transformed into brand new spec homes and custom homes at a rapid pace. You know, if you drive around, you'll see modern homes and new construction on almost every single street. Vacant lots waiting for a new buyer 
old ranch style homes, which are pretty much teardowns at this point, sitting next to huge modern luxury residences. And of course, your typical large Mediterranean Key West style homes. This community is ever evolving and will look quite different in a few years from now. There's no doubt that these homes are extremely expensive. It's gonna cost you at least a million dollars just to buy a lot, whether there's a home you need to tear down or not. The Golden Triangle is literally located just east of Meisner Boulevard. You're right there next to the luxury shops, restaurants like Max's Grill, Nightlife, Starbucks, and the Common Ground Coffee. You can't beat the location. The walkability of these neighborhoods is probably the best of all neighborhoods in East Boca. Also, as expected, you are zoned for the same incredible public schools like Addison Meisner, but I would say that many residents here enroll their kids in the area's private schools, schools like Pinecrest, San Andrews, American Heritage and Del Rey, Boca Prep, Grandview Prep, or other prestigious Palm Beach private schools. Lake Wyman Park is also within close proximity to the Golden Triangle, which is great for families with kids. There are two playgrounds, tennis courts, basketball courts, and a walking trail. It's truly a great area. I really love this community and plan to shoot more content here and in similar neighborhoods, so keep an eye out on my channel. Okay, so number five on our list is Palm Beach Farms, but you won't find any actual farms here or livestock either. In fact, Palm Beach Farms is another highly desired self-governed community on the higher end with absolutely zero HOA fees. Number five, Palm Beach Farms. Palm Beach Farms is located in Southeast Boca Raton on the Deerfield Beach border. Like many of the other neighborhoods on this list, you will find homes varying in style and size, one and two story homes from three to five bedrooms, 1400 square feet on the smaller side, and over 6,000 square feet for larger residences. There have been homes for sale that sit on an acre of land, which is an awesome find. Originally, homes here were built in the late 1980s and many have been updated or even rebuilt. The community is extremely well-maintained and the owners here take pride in their home's appearance and landscaping. Features you may see in the community include homes with artificial grass and luxurious outdoor living areas with swimming pools, pergolas, high-end outdoor kitchens, maybe even a putting green, homes with metal roofs, impact glass windows, and of course, incredible interior designs with high-end flooring and modern finishes throughout. Prices here start around 800,000 on average, at least that's what I'm seeing right now, and can go well into the millions for grand residences on big lots with those luxury features. You'll even find amazing waterfront estate homes with private gates on the Gulfstream Canal that have boat docks and lifts. If you have a boat, this community is another excellent option because residents love the fact that there's easy access to the ocean with no fixed bridges. You are also within close proximity and can even drive a golf cart over to Royal Palm Yacht and Country Club if you wanted to. Residents that have children love the fact that the neighborhood has tons of kids. People are friendly here and you'll see neighbors walking their dogs or riding their bikes, just being active. Again, this is another neighborhood zone for the A-rated Addison Miser School District. The community is also close to the Pine Breeze Park, the Boca 18th Street Playground, Hillsboro El Rio Park, and of course, Sugar Sand Park. Okay, so now let's head to Northeast Boca Raton on the border of Delray Beach. Here, you'll find the last community on our list, which is Hidden Valley, where you get the best of both cities. Number six, Hidden Valley. Hidden Valley is a quiet neighborhood with no homeowners association that is situated between Boca Raton's Yamato Road and Delray Beach's Linton Boulevard, very close to the intracoastal and ocean. This community began development in 1962 by Bob Sullivan Sr. who developed other great communities in the area such as Camino Gardens that I mentioned earlier on this list and the Cove in Deerfield, including several golf courses. He was pretty known during his time. With that being said, Hidden Valley contains a variety of your typical Florida one-story ranch style homes. We've seen a bunch of those in this video and of course two-story homes in different styles. Many of them have swimming pools and nice size yards for entertaining. Like the other neighborhoods on this list, we've seen an enormous amount of home interiors being refreshed in this neighborhood with granite and quartz countertops, newer cabinetry, hardwood floors, as well as new roofs installed, of course, impact windows and other desired features. You won't see huge modern luxury compounds here quite like you would see in the Golden Triangle, but there are definitely large residences here, up to six bedrooms, and prices currently range over 500,000 to over a million dollars. In the homes that I've sold, it appears that homeowners prefer renovating to a more organic, modern coastal look, some even leaving charming Mediterranean elements versus the sleek, ultra-modern style certain areas have definitely transitioned to. The beauty is you can do whatever you want since there's absolutely no HOA. 
Another thing that I'd like to mention is that homes on the north side of the community are on a canal that can be navigated to Delray Beach's Lake Ida, which is the second largest lake in all of Palm Beach County where you can enjoy water sports and bass fishing. You know, it's a really beautiful lake and area to explore, which we will in videos to come, so stay tuned. So I know I mentioned the same schools over and over on this list. Hidden Valley is actually zoned for Calusa Elementary, which is another A-rated school in Boca Raton. Like the other communities, Hidden Valley residents are zoned for Boca Community Middle School and Boca Community High. The Hidden Lakes Park is equipped with tennis courts, a playground, picnic area, and a pavilion, which is right off of Country Club Boulevard. The neighborhood, according to Ask Boca Group on Facebook, is a great place for kids to trick or treat during Halloween, and of course, check out decorated homes during the holiday season. The neighborhood is a good mix of families with children, retirees, and single people. You get a bit of everyone in here, and over 75% of the homes are owner-occupied, so there's a good sense of community. People rave about the location since you're about 15 minute drive to Delray Beaches, downtown Atlantic Ave, about 10 minutes from stores like Trader Joe's um, and Whole Foods and Fresh Market, and also about 10 minutes away from Meisner Park in downtown Boca Raton. So you're basically sandwiched between two incredible downtown scenes with an endless amount of fine dining, nightlife, family activities, festivals, and cultural events. If you're having a hard time deciding between Boca Raton and Delray Beach and know you 100% want a community with no HOA, highly consider Hidden Valley. Well, that sums up the top six neighborhoods in East Boca Raton. And of course, there aren't many, many more neighborhoods that I didn't mention, but these are the most talked about in the area that have little to no HOA. I'll be making future videos on the best waterfront communities as well as the more affordable locations in East Boca Raton, so stay tuned for that. Communities in Central and West Boca, yes, there is a difference if you live in other parts of Boca. The area that I talked about in this video is within Boca City Limits, which gives you free access to the dog park, discounted permit pricing for all of the beaches, and to use the pavilions, but other parts of Boca are actually considered unincorporated and are serviced by the county, which don't reap the same benefits. I'll save all of that for another video, but in the meantime, if you're looking to make a move next week, next month, or even next year, feel free to give us a call, send us a text or an email so we can help make your move down here a smooth one. If you have anything to add about these great communities or have any questions, please drop me a comment below. Which one stood out to you guys? What area should I shoot next? I would love to hear from you. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, but before you go, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button for more content just like this one. Until then, we hope to see you around.